Welcome to Nerd on Nerd with me, Jack Hempster, and me, Liam Underwood. In this episode, we're talking about The Witcher 3, which we have played on PlayStation 4, but is available elsewhere. But smooth, first, smooth covering up the fact that you don't know what else it's on. Uh, I know it's on Xbox. It's on PC too. And I think it's on PC. It is. I don't know if it's available anywhere else though. I don't think it's on SNES or Sega. Well, what about like... um? So you know how you got PC, right? Yeah. If I buy The Witcher 3 for PC, uh-huh. I can't then play it on my Mac, can I? Uh, Not if it's not Mac compatible. So do we know if it's available on Mac? No idea. There we go then. See, it wasn't a stupid thing to say after all. Um, now it's time for catching up with Jack and Liam. So how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm not too bad. I've been very busy, Jack. Have you? Oh, yes. What have you been doing? I've been, you know, getting ready for my big move, doing lots of packing and exciting things, uh, sorting out bills. Oh. So, uh, fair to say, it's been pretty, uh, pretty non-stop. Yeah? I mean, see, now I know what your idea of non-stop is. Yeah. Is it that kind of non-stop, or is it real person non-stop? Real person non-stop. Oh, fair enough then. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haven't been enjoying it. But, you know, this is a fun show. Let's not bring the mood down so quickly. But, yeah. I don't know. What have you been up to? Well, I've not been up to much, you know, adult stuff. Real things. Real things. Like you. I've no, been course. up to, to you know, the teenage son things. Like playing Wait, Battlefield 1. You're, you're not a teenager? Yeah, no, I know. Okay. I'm aware of that, Liam. Okay. But, you know... Playing Battlefield One in yeah. my room, yeah, that feels kind of teenagery. Yeah, How's it, how is it? Is it a good game? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Is it better than Battlefield Four? That's a tricky question, Liam. At the moment, I think I'm enjoying it more. Why is it called Battlefield One? Yet yeah, it came out after Battlefield Four. So I th- I think that what they're doing mm-hmm. is because it goes back in time to you know the First World War. I think, one, it's because it's World War One, so that would make sense. Okay. Or possibly it's because because they've gone back in time, they're saying more like a timeline of games. So Battlefield 1, because it is the first chronological game. It's a little bit confusing, right? Oh, no, it do- it totally is. Okay, not just me. No, um, no. Well, Battlefield's confusing anyway, because you've got the originals of Battlefield 1942. Yep. Then I think there were... Did it go... There was like some expansions for 1942, then maybe 2012, or no, 2020, whatever it was, came out. Oh, Battlefield Vietnam was a thing. I honestly don't know. It's, it's been a lot. And then there was like Battlefield Bad Company, the spin-off series, and now we've got Battlefield 1. Like, Battlefield 4 was not Battlefield 4. No, it's um, it's ridiculous, quite frankly. And to be honest, I don't enjoy the Battlefield games that much. Well, is that because, because you've said to me before that like Battlefield 4, you I think you played with me and my friends... Yeah. Once or twice? Like, like once, yeah, like maybe twice tops. Because that's when, that's when the multiplayer's fun. Yeah, it can be, but um, it just doesn't really appeal. What is it about it that isn't appealing to you? This isn't me being like, you should find it appealing, I'm genuinely interested. Okay, so when you say the words Battlefield 1, my brain doesn't go, I want to play that. It goes, oh god, another one. Yeah, but there, yeah, but there must be a reason for that. I think it's because I found 4 a bit tedious. Like, four, it's only fun if you're playing with people you know, and that so rarely happens that it's not that fun the rest of the time. Yeah, fair enough. Like, take Overwatch, for example. Um, I can enjoy that without playing it with people that I know. Yeah, but the, Battlefield 1 has, like, a single player as well. And? So did Battlefield I mean, that's, 4. Yeah, but I had real issues with the Battlefield 4 single player. Why is that? Uh, when I first got the game, I played the single player for, I believe, something like three hours. Okay. And the next time I turned on the game, it wiped all my progress and reset me to the beginning. So I just said, fuck it, and didn't ever play the single player again. Understandable. Yeah, it was really... Honestly, it, I've ne- I don't, I've been frustrated with games before, but that was... I was just like, I'm not playing this single player. <laughs> uh, that's no good. But I, I feel like, as well, this is another issue. Games in this day and age shouldn't be sold with such like glaring glitches and bugs well yeah no that's true it's true but it's the whole like state of gaming at the moment is people get rushed to meet these deadlines then delay you know three times and get to a point where they have to release the game yeah and you get like a fucking day one update so what else have you been up to uh not much just 
Battlefield 1, non That and Witcher 3. I've been watching, you know, TV series with my dad. What have you been watching? Uh, we've been watching more Westworld. That's still oh, good. I've it's heard it's good. Did you watch the film? Yeah, I watched it before we started the series. Okay, was it worth watching? The film? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's it's surpri- like it's not surprising because I've found myself liking a lot of these old films recently. But yeah, it's, it's an enjoyable film. Okay. And the show better? The show's better. Okay. It's because it's, you know, it sticks with the more recent, like, Game of Thronesy kind of deep. There's a lot of stuff going on and all these deep storylines running and you're trying to figure out what's happening. Yeah. Whereas the film is very much, like, cut and dry. This is what's happening. Ah, uh, fair enough. Um, speaking of TV, mm-hmm. I um, had to take a bit of a social media slash computer break yesterday. Oh, why? why would that be, Liam? Because I didn't want the opening of the new season of The Walking Dead spoiled for me. That's a good reason. Yeah, I'd I'd been waiting six months, or six and a half months since the last season ended, to to find out, you know, what happened. Yep. Obviously, I've got to be careful here, because I can't do any spoilers, because you are like an entire season behind. I mean, that's that's not the reason not to do spoilers. It the reason, reason not to do spoilers is that there are people out there other than me, like not me being a series behind. That's, you know, that's ridiculous. Yeah. But there are people who probably haven't seen the first episode yet. Yeah, but by the time this goes out, it'll be like a week after it's aired. When does it come out on English TV? Monday nights. Yeah, I, but it's still, it's you're cutting it close. With, you know what I'm like with spoilers? No. The idea of spoilers. Yeah, I mean, if we'd have given a spoiler alert... It would have yeah, been okay. yeah. Then that would, but I, yeah, you don't want to do that at the beginning of the show. But anyway, we're getting off. We're getting way off topic with our. Yeah. <laughs> how was the how was the opening? It again without saying any spoilers. Yeah. It was good. It was. That's kind, not. It was, that's not selling. It's like, really I mean, I'm hard gonna watch it, but... to talk about, right? Without I mean, just spoiling. give me a. Is it, good is not encouraging. Good is like, yeah, it was all right. That's what good says. Here's to me. the thing. I I really need you. To catch up, and we've had some some fans angrily messaging me. One fan saying, "No, two." Who's the other one? Is it Cat? Yep. Yeah. It doesn't count if it's your friend and your girlfriend. It does. And they're both. I mean, Mark been, is also my friend. I'm sorry, Mark. Yeah, they've both been angrily messaging me Cat's saying that you're a bit of a dickhead for not catching up. And, All right. Um, well, I thought about this. Yeah. Because I, you, you told me that today. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no, it's fair enough, but. I then messaged you later in the day and said, well, we usually are specials for series. Yeah. I get them being annoyed at me missing the end of last series. Yeah, which because... I was also annoyed at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, everyone knows that. You were very annoyed in the podcast. Yeah. But I, like, we do a special at the end of a series, right? Yes. So I am agreeing now. Yes. That I will have caught up fully by the end of this series so that we can do a series, whatever series we're on of The Walking Dead. Seven. Seven. A series seven wrap up. No, that is good. But like I said to you earlier, uh, I feel like this season cannot end. Like I feel like th- this the, the start will be like this episode is probably the peak of the season, yeah, which I know be... isn't encouraging. It's not, but th- that's fine. I'll, I'll still watch it. But like, I, I just I, yeah, I feel like the finale will not be as talked about or have as much buzz around it. As but I mean, we the also start. don't. We also can't know that because it's the first episode. No, we can't. This is just me predicting, and we'll yeah. find out in a few months' time if I'm right or not. Yeah. And what I'd quite like is um, on the next episode of Nerd on Nerd, just a little update of how how this is going. Because you'll, I mean, you'll that's be going only through in two like weeks. A, an entire season behind, so it's not like it'll be particularly spoilery. Yeah. Ugh. So just I'm a little busy update. for the next two weeks, though. Are you? Yeah. Really. Car lessons and stuff. I mean, I feel like they're going to take maybe a couple of hours of your day. Yeah. And probably not every day. No, I'm going to do like two lessons maybe. And then you'll think you're ready to drive. Yeah. Okay, cool. We'll see how that goes. Uh, let's not get into the car thing again. <laughs> Although, I would like to read out a tweet that was sent to us uh, about you. Yeah, sure, go. Go for it. So, Jason Michael, at film underscore faculty said one of you will eventually end up dead. That argument about the car was intense, to say the least. And then I responded, saying that I was only looking out for your safety, Jack. And um, Jason Michael came back, saying, I know, and he wasn't having it. The conversation was more dangerous than the potential car accident. So, that tweet's not about me. No, this tweet is about how you're stupid. 
I don't think it. I think. See, I thought you might have been thinking this earlier when you told me about this tweet, and I yeah. went and looked at this tweet. Yeah. You realise he's not saying that I'm going to die in a car accident, right? He thinks we're going to kill each other because he thinks we hate each other. Yes, I know. But also, it's when got I, nothing to do with the car. It has everything to do with it's it. It's got nothing yeah, to do with the car. When I said, okay, here's here's what has to do with it. Liam says this. I was only looking out for Jack's safety, and then Jason said, "I know," and he wasn't having it. That's to do with the car. I mean, it's to that's do with the you car. replying to a tweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I can see what you're saying, Liam. Yeah, yeah. I can see what you're saying. Yeah. But I think what you're doing there is you're doing that that because it's hard, Liam, to read intonation in tweets. Not really. Look, w- watch me do this. No, 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 no. Give me a second. No, no, you've been talking. You've been talking. Is it? Was the man's name Jason? Yeah. Jason, if you're if you're out there, buddy, yeah. if you're listening, just send us another tweet, a third tweet in this, a trilogy of tweets. Greedy. This, I mean, just one. He's already I'm, I'm happy with the tweets he's already sent us. To be honest, yeah, but that's because you don't want clarification because you you think I'm right. Don't need it. I okay. was only looking out for Jack's just safety. Just clarify with me, Jason. I know. If you think that I'm going to die in a car accident, it. I think you're going to have egg on your face. Okay. It's all right. I understood what Jason was saying because I'm not dense. I mean, you you think that I'm going to die because of a map in my car, but let's not start on this. No, we, we do not need to go into that. So basically, The Walking Dead, right, with, without spoiling it... Yeah. Because the other thing that we need to be clear about is um, you are not you don't read the comics, do you? Like, you've read some of them, but you're not exactly... Yeah, I got today. really far in them, but... How then, far did you get? I mean, it was back when I was in uni, so, you know. I got up to, um, I think, the governor stuff, I'm pretty positive. Right, okay, yeah, not very far then. I mean, that's quite far. It is, but not when you compare to how much is now out as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a marathon's not that far, Liam, when you compare it to the circumference of the Earth. Exactly. But it's still fucking impressive when someone walks a marathon, so please be impressed with me, Liam. I mean, <laughs> did you say when someone walks a marathon? I did, I did. <laughs> I, I might really be projecting slightly. When someone that's not, does that. No, that's really impressive. Walking a marathon would be hugely impressive. I mean, running it would be better. It would be better, but it would be impressive. You couldn't walk a marathon. Yes, I could. No, you couldn't. I could. I bet you couldn't. I'm not going to, but I know I right. could. Right, oh, fucking anyone could say they could walk a marathon. Why would I walk a marathon? I'd run it. I don't think you could run a marathon. I'd struggle. You couldn't do it. How far is a marathon? Is it 26 miles? How far is a mile? Quite far. Like, okay, from my house... Yeah. How far would I have to go to get to a mile? Like Tesco's? No. <laughs> co-op? Where's the co-op? The co-op's down... Like past the train station. That might be a mile. And I got that 26 times. So there and back, 13 times? I think that's doable. I think it might be slightly more than that. But anyway, anyway. Yeah. Um, so basically, my, my, my summation of my thoughts on The Walking Dead, without spoiling it, it was good, but I annoyingly can't say any more than that because it would be spoiling it, but it was good with a hesitation before the word good. Okay, okay. I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, once you've watched it, we can actually talk about it properly and maybe do a little special episode. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a special when the series ends. I have some sad news for our listeners this week. Do you? Mm. Unfortunately, Liam hasn't had time to go to the cinema, so there's no spoiler-free reviews of any films that he saw at the cinema because he didn't have time to go to the cinema. That's a shame. That's my favourite bit of the show. I think it's up, though. I think a lot of people listen kind of to be like oh i wonder what i should go to the cinema this weekend maybe i'll listen and find out what liam saw and i'll go and see anything that he saw that he thought was good yeah i i feel like a lot of people listen for that i'm not alone. convinced well that's okay um but we've got some exciting plans coming up haven't we hell yeah we do i'm going to see dr strange i'm seeing it before you are you yeah thursday oh so you are you going with friends yeah and are we going to do a special yeah we'll probably next week sometime Cool, that's fine. Um, so, but just before that, I, I just want to quickly ask: Are you excited for this film? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't feel as excited as I have about some Marvel films. Mm-hmm. But I'm looking forward to it. What are we doing on the weekend, Jack? Liam, this weekend we have decided to go to Tully's farm. Now I know what you're thinking, listeners. You're thinking that sounds like a farm, but actually, over October, our UK listeners will probably know about this. I say UK, probably southwest of England. But it turns into a uh, horror attraction with eight haunted house things. Yeah. Live bands, some rides. We're going to try and do some, like, video. Yeah, we're not going to be allowed to film in the haunts. But we think we'll be able to record us afterwards. 
To be honest, listeners, me and Liam are both. So I'm bad at playing scary games. Yeah. But Liam is also a coward. That's not true. We're both cowards. That's I would take umbrage with that. I think you're more worried at the moment. Yeah. You're more scared of what's going to happen than I am. I No, I'm not scared of what's going to happen. I'm worried about the fact that I'm going to practically be blind for a night. But what are you worried about? Not seeing things. Yeah, but that are you worried you're not going to see things? Like, I don't understand. Because you, the way it works is you have to have your hands on the person in front shoulders. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. What if it's so that you can't like punch out and you can't get lost. What about the person at the front? Yeah, the person in front just has to lead the way. I'm t- that's the bit I'm terrified of. I, I, don't, I really don't want to be the person in front. I would not be able to because I... Like, so here's the thing. No, tough shit. If they, say, if, if, if they say, oh, this guy is going to be at the front... Yeah. I'll, me or Cat will go behind you and tell you where to go. Yeah, because you, you can't get out and be like, oh, I'm not blind, which you are. And to be fair, it's not nice, but Yeah, still. that's what our listeners need to know. The reason why I'm kind of concerned about this is that my eyes don't work in dim light. Like, if I go into a cinema and the light's already gone down, I'm trying to find my seat, might as well give up. I, I just can't see in dim light. And that's all this is going to be. It's going to be an entire evening. No, it's not. It's not. You're, going around there's going to be ones light. that the chop shop looks like it's all lit up. Well, that'd be good. Because the thing is, I'm not worried about what's going to happen so much. Is I'm going to be annoyed if I walk through a whole horn and everyone's like, "Oh, that was really scary, wasn't it?" I'm like, "I don't know. I couldn't see any of it." I mean, they talk. They talk as well. It's not all sights. Well, I imagine it would be more scary the stuff that's going to happen if you couldn't see. Well, I'm just because like if some lady creeps up next to me and whispers in my ear and I turn around and see her, like I'll jump and I'll be like, "Oh, that was scary." Huh. <laughs> but then I'll see her and I'll be like, "Woof." It's yeah. just this crazy woman. Whereas you'll turn around and you'll be like, well, "No one's there." Yeah, the thing is, while I they're am gonna night fucking blind, love you. They're gonna, they're just gonna be. They'll be like, "Oh, just send him through by himself. We'll just well, walk next to him." I am night blind. I'm not stupid. So if I don't see a woman there, but I hear someone speaking, I'm like, "Oh, I think there might be a woman there." I think you're giving yourself a little bit too much credit there, Liam. But sure. Well, so I'm apprehensive about it. Basically, I think it will be fine. I'd be really excited if I. Like was quite confident that I'd be able to see. The thing that that makes me most apprehensive is just not seeing. Like we've been to play laser tag before, and I walked. Yeah, but that's, that's into running a wall. around. Yeah, this is you're going to be. We'll all be chained together with our arms. You'll be fine. Well, I'm I, not going to let you walk into anything. You'll probably push me into something. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So yeah, hopefully we'll have some video come up. Uh, I don't know if we'll get it turned around in time for Halloween. It'll be like a little post-Halloween spooktacular. Treat. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to be really busy next week as well, so I don't really know what my um, bandwidth is going to be like for getting this done. But, you know, we'll try. You'll get it when you get it, and you'll like it. Um, is that it for catching up with Jack and Liam? Uh, I think that's it with the catching up with, yeah. Sweet. Housekeeping. This is Liam's new part of the show, which he aired on the last episode. So it's not really new anymore, is it? It's becoming a fan favourite. Yeah. So, housekeeping is just where we kind of, like, follow up on things. For example, you might know if you listened to the last episode, and if you didn't, you should have. We talked about Berserk, didn't we? Yep. And since then, I believe both myself and Jack have read the second book of Berserk. Yep, we have. Have you read any more than that, or just the second? Uh, No, I've not read past volume two yet. Okay, same here. Uh, What did you think? It's another cliffhanger. Another cliffhanger ending, yeah. (laughs) As soon as it happened, I was like, oh, Liam's, Liam's not going to be happy about this. I was the, the thing is, in all honesty, I, I thought book one was better. Uh, book two, to me, just more of the same. I liked I liked book two. It was all right, but it didn't do anything ni- like new or different to one. No, that's fair. So, that but was I, think, I think it's going to be, you know, I think it might take a few volumes to... Well, yeah, I now need to read fucking number three just to get this bloody, what, we're, we're like three parts of this story so far? Four parts of it? Yeah. I just want to see this story arc resolved now. To You're going to end up buying all the volumes because every volume is going to end in a cliffhanger. I feel like that might be what they're gearing towards. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, the other wonderful thing about housekeeping is it gives us a chance to, to shout out to um, any listeners or, or you know Twitter followers we've got. And um, I'd just like to say a big thank you to Amanda who tweets us a lot. We appreciate that. And also she's uh, going back and listening to um, all of the episodes in order. So she's gone back from the start and is working her way through. So I just want to basically say good luck with that. Yeah. To be honest, because, I mean, that's... I think we get better as we go along. No, I think we definitely, like... Um, or have we peaked? No, I think that it's, it's ups and downs. It's ups and downs. There's some really good episodes and then some real stinkers. 
So, I'd say only a couple of stinkers, but like, that's a couple too many, isn't it? Yeah, probably. So, good luck. Um, yeah, good luck. Hopefully, you'll see an improvement as the show goes on. Yeah, if you go through and at the end you're like, oh, they're actually getting worse, don't tell us. Let us live in this delusion. Yeah, exactly. Um, anyone that you'd like to shout out? No, you're in charge of the Twitter now. I just occasionally pop on and see what people are saying. Okay. I'd like to thank John. John who? Uh, Smith. All right, thanks, John Smith. Cheers for the tweets. Wasn't he one of the characters in Pocahontas? Maybe. It's just the most common name. I've never seen Pocahontas. How do you know his name? <laughs> There's quite a few films where I haven't seen Also, them. how have you not watched Pocahontas? I think that's the bigger issue. So, it came out uh, at an age where I kind of thought I was a bit too big for Disney movies. So I, I, I remember um, one of my friends wanted to go see it for his birthday and I kicked up a bit of a stink about it because I said I'm too old to watch Disney movies. I hope he just went without you. Probably. I mean, I wouldn't have blamed him. Yeah. You're, oh, God. I hated kids like you. Why? Because, like, I'm not, no one's going to change their fucking birthday plan because one little shithead's like, oh, I'm too big to watch this film. Yeah, but maybe pick a good film to watch if it's your birthday. It's a good film. So here you go. Here's what I picked to watch for my she birthday. She paints with all the colours of the wind. Here's what I picked for my birthday last year. Star Wars The Force Awakens. No one complained. Yeah, but you're nearly 30. And? So the, how old were you when your friend went to, wanted to see Pocahontas? Too old for it, apparently. How old? I honestly can't remember. What, what it's going to be something shit like eight. <laughs> we'd, need to fig- we'd need to see what year it came out and then we could sort of figure it out. True. I'm looking it up. So I was going to as well. Poke- I don't know how to spell Pocahontas though. There we go. I think I've... Yeah. It came out 1995. So I'd have been four... So you'd have been eight. Oh, uh, that's, yeah. A, yeah, that's eight. pretty much the number I said. Yeah, eight. Uh, and I was too old yeah, for you were, Yeah, no, you're right, mate. You were too old for Disney. <laughs> <laughs> little old man Liam. <laughs> Fuck it out. Yeah, I was like, what? I'm not having all this shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, t- we're too mature for yeah. Pocahontas. Not enough boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I was just like... So I remember around that time... I got really into the Page Master. Oh, okay, yeah. So you'd started watching, yeah. Okay. Uh, do you know? Well, I know of the Page Master. I've never seen it. Got Christopher Lloyd in it, who is a uh, Doc Brown. In yeah, I know, I know. I know Christopher. And uh, old Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. And it's a, uh, it's like a live action and animation mix. So I oh, okay. think I was at a stage where I was like, I can't watch animated films unless they've got a live action element to them. Because like, this was also yeah. around the time that like Free Willy came out as well. So I think I was more like, oh, I'm not up for the card. And this was obviously also before um, we really had like good CGI. I mean, Pocahontas isn't CGI. No, I know. But when you talk about animation... Pocahontas is like quite good. I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. I mean, animation-wise. Because like, I think it's... You know, Disney went through that period of time where like people now post, you know, post GIFs of scenes that are identical because they use the same cells and just... Like yeah, a different character. I think it was you know after that period. Yeah, I mean, well, look at like I think like The Lion King, brilliant. Yeah, Aladdin, quite good. I think Aladdin was one of the first films that I remember seeing at the cinema. Fun fact. Fair enough. Anyway, we're getting wildly off topic here. That was I don't remember what we were talking about. Oh, housekeeping. <laughs> now it's time for culture swap. Swap my culture. What do we? What did we? What did we do this week, Liam? We played The Witcher Three, and I played it. For 38 hours and 3 minutes. I played it for 47 hours and 32 minutes. Now, I would like to just say, probably played it for more than that, because there's a lot of times where I made like the wrong choice, or I fucked up, or I died, so I went and loaded an old save. That's cheating. How's that cheating? That is, that's cheating. That's gaming the system. How is that cheating? In a game like this, your decision should be your decision. Not if it results in everyone dying. What do you mean, everyone dying? I don't know. There's definitely the game doesn't times. let everyone die. There's no like decision at the beginning where the game just goes right. The main quest's over. Good job. Like not. Let what do you mean? Give me an example. example. Give me an example. Give me an example. Of it's mostly like if I die or if I lost a round of Gwent. I didn't like that, so I'd restart. See, I can accept the Gwent because yeah. I I'm aware that. You, well, no, because you, you can just play it again, couldn't you? Yeah, I know, but I just I wanted to be good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I can't accept the Gwent. Jesus no, Christ! Because in my head, I'm like, well, I, I haven't lost one. And what about the... Well, you, Jesus, really? <laughs> yeah. You're so pathetic. Yeah. Um, what about the dying? Was that the same thing? You're just like, I haven't died in this game. Yeah. 
Because I've died and just been like, yeah, cool. No, no, my it character... Just, it reloads from the save if you die. No, because I'm role-playing my character, right? And my character doesn't die. Yeah, but it reloads. It reloads a save file if you die. I've done it manually. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. If you die, it just loads the last checkpoint. Didn't like it. But, I mean, it's not It's not like, oh, you've come back to life. It literally reloads the save. It's like doing it. what you're doing. And there's, there's definitely some... So, so here's, here's... Okay, here's sometimes when a decision was made, right? Go on. Early on in the game... Um, there's, alright, this is going to be confusing to any listeners that haven't played the game. We'll backtrack in a minute and catch you up, but just let me finish my point, thank you. Um, there's certain dialogue choices, and if you have a certain, uh, skill, it unlocks an additional choice sometimes. Like, there's like a, um, like a mind manipulation type skill, right? Yep. Um, so there'll be certain times when I didn't have enough slots to have that in always, so I'd start a conversation, then that would come up as an option, but it would be, like, Reddit because I couldn't use it because I didn't have that skill equipped at the time. So I'd be like, right, well, I want to use that. So I'd have to reload so I could use that option. Yeah, but that's cheating. No, that's just the game poorly designed by it. Going. No, no, that, no, 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 yeah. no. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, listen, yeah. listen, yeah, yeah. no, no. No, you yeah. just made a point. Yeah. It's my yeah. turn. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Listen. I'm listening. Come on. Make right. your point. So that's not a poor game oh. design. Shut up. <laughs> I'm genuinely making a legit point here. I let you make that stupid comment. So you I didn't let, let me, me explain it. Comment. What? You didn't let me explain it. Oh, sorry, carry on then. I didn't realise there was more. Yeah. Was, was your point not there weren't enough ga- slots for me to use it, so I reloaded the game and put it in there? So, no, what, what the point is, is because obviously the spell slots are primarily for combat, right? I feel like when it's dialogue, if you've got that spell like, unlocked and you've put points in it, if it's just for dialogue, it should still let you use that. You shouldn't have to have it equipped for combat reasons. That's all my point was. I don't think it's unreasonable. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, but so what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. right, it's designed so that you make a decision w- of what you're going to pick. If you could have everything you unlocked, or even just those things, right? So even if it was just that one, I mean, one, that would be fucking weird if for some reason one of the skills you buy you can just always have and all the others you have to slot. But no, aside from that... not that you always listen, have it. Listen, aside from that... If it's a dialogue aside, option. Let me make my point. I let you make your point. Let me make mine. Good boy. <laughs> Let me make my point. My so, name is Jack. <laughs> the way it works, right? So, listeners, the way it works is you've got, you have, I think you start with, do you start with just one? Yeah. Or do you start with three? No, you start with like one. Yeah. Okay, so you start with these slots, and when you buy an ability, you have to put it in one of those slots to use it. You unlock more as you level up, and I think, but I think the maximum you get is three, six, nine, twelve. Yeah. So, the, so the way you're meant to play it, Liam, or at least the way I'm doing it, is I always have that one slotted. Well, because I, I know that I'm going to use it, right? I know I'm going to use it because my character does. But some people, like, you don't have to use that. Right, but here's the thing. Like, there okay. are always solutions to it that don't require that. Here's the thing, right? So you you have the most basic of that always available to use as a spell, okay? And obviously yeah. you can... you what, what we're talking about is something that we've unlocked to make it stronger, right? Yes. So it, you, can, you can always use the base level in combat... But you can also use this stronger level in combat. I'm just saying, if yeah. you've unlocked the stronger level, but it's not currently equipped, yeah, no, I don't I'm see not why talking you can't about it in combat. It in dialogue, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Liam. I think the idea, hmm. I think, right, not this isn't just about that. Okay, so okay. I, this is taking it down to a, a real like basic level of what I think they tried to do. Right, okay, I think you're so that's fine. You can think I'm stupid. No, so, not you. The game. <laughs> you think it's stupid. So yes, I just assumed. I mean, but so what I think well. they were doing was fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> what I think they were doing was because you've got all these different skills, and some of them, like there's the combat tree ones, and you get ones that increase your light attack damage, and a different branch increases your heavy attack damage. One increases your dodge, and then in the spell one, you've got one that increases each of your different spells that you've is always that got a base level of, like that one. As well. Yeah, then there's the alchemy, which uh, one line focuses on bombs, one on the oil you can coat your weapons in, all that stuff. And then there's the brown So what ones I think they were doing... That's like the, what, necessary. Yeah, they're just like bonus ones. No, they're necessary if you're doing Death March, trust. I don't know if they are. I think you might be shit at the game. But anyway, so what I think they were trying to do, and what I think they've done, because that's the way I'm playing it and it works, is they were getting you to like play your character in a certain way. Like You got to choose what way you played your character, but my one I have... I think I've got two light attack increase things. Then I've got a dodge one, because I dodge all the time, and I rarely parry. And then I've got the fire spell upgrade and the that, that mind control one. And I've got a third one of that blue, but I can't remember what one I picked. Should go for Quen. Quen's good. I think it might be Quen. 
Yeah. Right. So I definitely have to. Just... I definitely have three reds, three blues. Right, let's just catch listeners up, okay? Because if you don't know what we, what The Witcher Three is, this is all going to be very confusing. So, The Witcher Three. It's a PlayStation game. I haven't played and, and Xbox number one or two. Neither have I. I've briefly played two. Yeah, but that the story in those games does have an impact on this one. And even when it starts, it asks you if you'd like to like kind of replicate a previous um, set, like a previous gameplay. So yeah, there's certain big decisions that you might have made in previous games that you can like program in here, and that will affect how this game plays out. Um, or there's just like a standard typical thing to opt for which is what i went for because i hadn't played them and it is basically a role-playing game where you ponce around fighting monsters and talking a lot right i'm not rising to you no i'm I'm sorry i'm just trying to explain the game for anyone give it i mean you're giving it it a really biased opinion well feel free to chip in Oh, okay, so The Witcher Three is an RPG where you uh, explore the world of <laughs> Geralt right. of Rivia. Okay, yeah. Mm. Meet his famous friends, slay beasts for contracts, save the world a bit at a time, Liam. Cool. I think you really sold it to a- anyone that was maybe sitting. I on think the I fence might have sold then. it better than you. I think if someone, if, I think if someone was on the fence and they heard yours, they'd probably go no. And they just say, if they heard mine, they might go yes. Time. Um, so, where do you want to start with discussing this? Because I feel like there's a couple of key points that we need to break down, okay? I think we've got story as one key point. Yep. We've got combat as another. I don't know if that's a key point, but yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, it's a... It's a I mean, that large... should be gameplay. Combat's yeah. part of gameplay. Okay, yeah, not... sorry. So you've got story yeah. and gameplay. Yeah. And then you've got Gwent. <laughs> yeah, all right. Okay, that's fair enough. Let's do the three. Those are the three, right? I think we should finish on Gwent. Cool, okay. So should we do story first? Yep. So okay, the basic the the hook to this story, if you will, is uh, you've kind of got like an apprentice, like a girl called Siri, who goes missing, and the in- like as far as I'm aware, the entire story of this game is you trying to find her, and there is also yeah. some stuff with this wild hunt thing that hasn't re- at this point, at 38 hours and three minutes in, hasn't been massively explained. It's just been kind of like glimpsed. Yeah, you you have to fight them at the beginning. Yeah, but they, they keep returning. The yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know, but I'm saying... Yeah. Like, we, I don't really know what they're looking for and what they're, you know, doing. They're just there. Yeah. They're like, they're like the big bad, if you will. I don't... See, I don't I don't think they're the big bad, but yes, I'm, yeah, I get what you're saying. I mean, at this point in the game... I mean, they might be. It could be that what's-his-face, the, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah, fair enough, maybe they yeah. are. So at this point... I mean, the, the reason I'm saying I don't think they're the big bad is because so far, like you said, they haven't had a huge impact. Yeah, it's just to me, it feels I, I, like So I don't think they're the big they're... bad in the traditional sense. Okay. Like, they're not always there. It's like it's not like every time you get close, suddenly the wild hunt appear and stop. Yeah, them. no, they're just sort of in the background. Yeah, they're hunting for her as well. Yeah. Um, and so that's it. So what I will say is, story-wise, I find it often tedious, sometimes interesting, often tedious. Whereas I had the opposite feeling. Yeah. Like, I think when, it, when it's I most really interesting... Like is when you've got quite morally ambiguous dilemmas to, to work your way through. Yep. Um, a, a, there's a good example. and like the, the first kind of... You've got to have a starting area, which the starting area alone took me five plus hours to, to get through. Yeah, it's a pretty big area. Yeah, and I really enjoyed it. The starting area was what like hooked me into this game and made me think, yeah, I want to play more of it. Really good. So much regret. The the first like main quest is all about this guy called the Bloody Baron, and if you yeah. want to play this game, we're going to get into spoilers a little bit. But basically, it's about how his wife was pregnant and he used to beat her, and then um, did she have an abortion or a miscarriage? No miscarriage. It was a miscarriage. I think so. And that turned into some weird demon thing. I can't remember the name of it. Like Bogler? No, what was it called? Yeah, uh, something weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. It is something, be- yeah. Yeah, it's a weird little demon thing, and it's all about him basically having to get over himself. Right, sure. Like, feel I mean, just, free just to really interject, quickly, listeners, Jack. Just super, yeah, I'm going to. Super, like, the way Liam's describing this, the whole sort of point of this, like, because you said it's a good example of the moral grey area stuff, right? Yeah. Right? It's, you're putting it very black and white, because the way you're describing it is just the bloody baron is the bad guy. That's what you just described. But well, in, yeah. when you actually play through that story, well, he is you find the bad out guy. that, like, no, he's not. He's a dick. 
Yeah, but you find out that the reason he's been... He's got reasons for why he did that. Go on, then. Uh, his wife cheated on him when he was at war and mm. slept with some other dude and re- didn't tell him about it. Yeah, so his solution was to get drunk and beat his wife. But yeah, well, he says he does he's it once okay and he regretted guy. it. He's okay. not a good guy, Liam. I'm saying. Yeah. You see, again, you're seeing it whilst you're saying you like the black and white, like you like the grey area stuff, yeah. you're ignoring the grey area. Oh, he was a dick. It's bad that he beat his wife, yeah, it is. But it's also bad that she cheated on him. He's a dick, though. Yeah, he is a dick, but yeah. it is a grey area. Because he, whilst he's a dick, at the end, he genuinely is repentant. Or at least in the storyline where I, that I played through it, yeah, my I, one and... seemed fucking hugely repentant. Like, me and him went down to save his wife. Yeah, I think there's some, like... Um, obviously, I think we both played it quite similarly, because I had the same. And I don't know... Here's one of the things about this game, is it... When you're playing it, you have decisions to make. And they feel like they're quite big decisions. But I'm not sure, once you've made those decisions how much the game would sort of vary so that so just as an example say if two people were playing and they both made the different decisions how much their game would vary from the others does that well, make sense no, we, yeah yeah it does but we know it varies because we've both talked about what happened in our stories at the end and mine is different to yours like i yeah, know what you're okay. saying though i do know what you're saying because to be fair to what you're saying yeah there are there's a lot of times because it usually in conversations gives you two options yeah and there are a lot of times where no matter what you pick he says something and I'm very aware that if I'd picked the other option, they could easily have just used that same line. Yes. And that and, annoys me. And sometimes for the it, even stuff, the option that they give you, you pick it thinking that it means one thing, but he then says something that's similar to it, but actually means something slightly yeah, different. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had, had ones where I wanted before. to do something nice and then ended up like killing yeah, someone. Yeah, and that's and the time like, when, I didn't want to kill that person. And that's the time when I would have reloaded and made I didn't reload. I went, fair, I, went, I, I went, hey, Geralt, you're your own man. Fair enough. Was I went, hey, I wish this game had been clearer with its intentions, and restarted. But t- for the difference between the, the like the choices we make having an impact, yeah. in my storyline, there's a, a, like a specific bit where you get this option to... You find these kids that are living with this weird hermit lady who you later find out is the Baron's wife. Yeah. Uh, and there are these evil characters called the Crones who are these three sort of witches, almost, but they're not really because they're like... Deformed well, monsters. Here's the issue I had with this bit: is my game glitched during all this stuff? So, oh, that's right, you told me this. Yeah, the the crones. I never got any audio for them. I had subtitles on, so I could read what they were saying, but all I got was background audio while they yeah. were talking, which was really fucking annoying. That is really annoying. Their voices were really good. They well, suited them. The game shouldn't glitch then, should it? Especially yeah, no, no. I'm not. I wasn't. I wasn't saying that's your fault. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, was, I, mean, I was saying okay, it's sucks that it glitched. Considering this is not a new release, really, this has been out for a year. Yeah, it's a big game though. Like I've got yeah, sympathy but... for why there are glitches, but I do wish they would fix them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. Chill out. Bro. I'm chilled. Chill, bro. I'm very chilled. I'm, okay. I'm like Mr. But, Freeze. So, so that happens. The crones happen, and then you get this choice. Where you go to a hill, like it's like it's, it's like a sacred hill or something to the people. Yeah. Or, no, people have just been killing. There's been lots of deaths. Yeah, and it's a tree spirit thing. Yeah. So this, if I'd understood more clearly what was going on at this point, I don't know if I'd have made the same decision I did. Yeah. <laughs> because I wasn't a hundred percent sure that that creature was evil. <laughs> yeah. It's because it... I was like, oh, maybe it's like because the crones tell you it's evil, and I was like, well, they're evil, so why yeah. would I believe them? I think the game does deliberately mislead you. Yeah, because it's like. You end. I so basically, you didn't do what I did. You no. ended up killing that monster. Yeah, I was just sick. Of and I shit. saved it. Yeah. And I think that was the point where the two stories of ours diverge yeah. more for the ending because so, that meant that for me, the orphans lived and fucked off somewhere. I don't know where. Yeah. Whereas for me, the the crones ate the orphans, and seeing yeah. that turned the Baron's wife mental, and it ends with him taking her away. But this is the thing. So yeah. Did you while... did you end up having to fight her? No. Okay. So in my one, right? Yeah. Uh, after that happened, I go back down there. The, me, the, me, the Baron and his daughter all went down to that little village she had. Yeah, did that. Yeah, and uh, they find her on the floor. Yeah, and because the kids have escaped, the crones yeah. curse her and turn her into a water hag. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't have any of that. Yeah, see, so that happened, and then we did this whole fight to save her, and then right. she dies. <laughs> it was uh, real bad. Oh yeah, see that didn't happen. It ended with the Baron just taking her away. But but here's the thing. This is what I'm saying. Like. We both had quite different endings there, but it's not like that actually affected, you know, but the, that's, the that's world, if you know what I mean. Gonna like, that's going to happen in any game like this. It's a bit the frustrating. Idea, the idea of choices affecting an outcome, Liam, 
Yeah. Unless it's something like Until Dawn, where you have... Yeah. It, Until Dawn is basically a story. Yeah. Like, there's not... It, there is a game there. Yeah, it's more. A, it's a like a choose-your-own-adventure, really. Yeah, definitely. So, and, so you can have all these crazy branching stories in a game like that. Yeah. But because The Witcher's got all this gameplay stuff and, like, a core map, like, you can't have game-changing events... No, I get that. But you can like, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying, you know, you know, I'm not saying, oh, you're an idiot. No, I, get, I get what you're saying, and I agree with you. Like, yeah. I, would lo- I would love a game that was like that. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is, you're seeing that I'm making very reasonable points. I'm not going to say it, though. No, of course not, but we know that that's what you're seeing here. Um, so that's the story part of it, basically. Like, Whoa, well, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, I don't want to just talk about what you think about the story. I really like the story. No, I haven't finished. I'm just... Oh, let me finish. Jeff. You just said that's the story part. If you'd let me finish my sentence before you jumped in, I was going to say, that's the story part from my perspective. Now, right. I've seen a little bit more of like the main story. Like I'm currently going through the quest for a character called Dandelion. Um, I know yeah. you've obviously resolved that, so I can't talk too much about it. Um, but that's the main story. There's a lot of an awful lot of side missions and, and contracts and not, lots of other nonsense to be getting on with. Yeah. It's just... you. Here's what bothered me. When you do the main story, you get a lot of experience, right? A lot of experience. You level up like crazy. When you do the side quests and all that stuff, get fuck all. Yeah, I was doing quests that gave me like 10 experience. Yeah, and it was really annoying because I was the right level to be doing it. I wasn't like over-leveled or anything. It just, it really felt like, the, it almost felt like the game didn't really want me doing these side quests because it just wasn't like rewarding me for it. Yeah, it, well, I, think, was... I, don't think, I don't think it does want you, I, I think it wants you to do them. But I don't think the game wants you to like actively seek them out and find all of them. If yeah, you know no, I mean. and, but I, yeah, and I—that's not what I've been doing. I've just been, yeah, no, no, I, I, it wasn't saying yeah. that. I've just been going through them. I just kind of wish there was more of an incentive because I've got a lot now that I've just been ignoring because I'm like, well, it's a lot of my time to do this side quest for not a lot of reward. Yeah, the thing I've found, yeah, is that I enjoy the main storyline quests. I enjoy the quests branch off from that so some of those side quests will be things like you're doing the main story like a lot of the dandelion ones are like you'll be doing the main story and then one of the characters in that story says like oh help me do this and you're like and that gives you a side quest and i've enjoyed those ones yeah i don't necessarily like the side quests that are just random like or they feel like you're walking around and some random strangers just like i dropped a coin in a well and then you go and explore the well i had a one one where um i had to teach this woman how to do some sword fighting Oh, I did that one, yeah. Her and yeah. her twin. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. just that felt like it had a lot of potential that they just snuffed out really quickly. It was interesting, but yeah, it, it did end very quickly. And Yeah, and she had of quite a lot of like um, sexual tension, I thought, with um, Geralt. Yeah, she did, yeah. And it just seemed really weird. that like I, This I is another like, difference between our characters that we should probably clarify when we... Because sex stuff is coming. Well, <laughs> this thought, game has a fair amount of sex that you can potentially do. I thought he was going to buff her and then she just disappeared. Liam's character basically will fuck anything that moves. Yeah. My character loves Yennefer, who is the main romance. My, ca- my of the character Witcher buffed games. her. Yeah, so is mine. You got to see her boobies. That's yes, you do. But there's but like yeah, so my character like I don't know. It's, it's a just very the way mature game. It. We should say it that. is very mature. Yeah. Like in case people haven't figured that out yet, when there's you know like um, miscarried demons and stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's pretty. Um, I mean, one of the one of the random upgrades you can have on weapons is just like plus ten percent chance to dismember. Yeah, which I love. That's my favorite upgrade. Yeah, it's quite mature. The sex stuff wasn't that sexy. It's not meant to be, Liam. It's not porn. Then why is it there? It's because it's part of the story. It is right, but okay. Like Mass Effect Could had they? sex stuff, and that game right. isn't a porn game. But really. Jack. You know how you always have a go at me when I read my um, erotic comics? Can we please not bring them up when we're talking about a different thing? No, it relates, okay? You have a go and you're like, oh, it's just porn, it's just porn. What is the point in a game like The Witcher 3 of showing, like, Yennefer's boobs? If it's, one, if it's not porn, and two, you could easily do that in a much classier way where you don't show them. You could still be like, oh, they clearly had sex, but you don't need to show the boobs. All right, well, Liam, for example... Yeah. Right, so the difference between your porn comics and mm-hmm. a story with boobs or whatever in it... Yeah. ...would be that your your porn comics, and you've got yeah. to admit, I know that you don't read them, so you claim, for that sort of porny aspect. Yeah. But 100% there are dudes out there masturbating to that. Oh, probably. Like, 100%. Because yeah. it was written with that also as an intention, right? Yeah. But something that just shows boobs or sex... Alien. Not Alien. Starship Troopers. 
Okay. Has a very famous scene with boobs in it. Famous because yeah. I believe most of us were teenage boys when that film was around. I don't remember it, but carry on. What? I haven't seen that film in years. Oh, for fuck's sake. Anyway, there's a, a scene in that where just there are women in the shower. And yeah. it's very boob-filled. Okay. But, uh, like, it's not done as... It's not the director being like, oh, yeah, just chuck some tits in. I mean, it might have been. But yeah. it does, it's not made to be a porn thing. So, yeah, they're probably using it as a lure and like, oh, look, this game's got sex in it. Mm. But there's no one sitting there... Well, there might be. There's not yeah. many people sitting there knocking do, one out. Do you think, in your opinion, it would have... That the boobs were necessary. No, but I wouldn't have necessarily removed them. Not because I want them there. Yeah. Just because it doesn't... Like, if you're having that scene, it would have yeah. felt weirder to me if yeah. you've got this game where you're beheading people. Yeah. There's, like, slow-mo animations of me cutting off dudes' head. Yeah. heads. It yeah. would have been weirder to me if I then got to a scene where sex was going to happen and yeah. it, like, did the bullshit fade to black. Yeah, but it, it, it didn't have to fade to black, did it? It could have just shown no, the person why... behind... Yeah, but they don't show like her. They don't like. What's wrong with showing boobs? You, 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 you sound like a prude. You sound really prude. No, like you know. What's wrong I, with them showing boobs? I'm you not. Know. When they show the boobs on the screen, Liam, I'm not sitting there going, "Oh yeah, save I, that one for later." It I just think, happens. They're just yeah, boobs. I think that's the issue. Grow up, Liam. No, I think that's the issue. I Jack. think you're a 13 year old boy trapped in a man's body. Possibly, but I think the issue is I love boobs. Okay, big fan. It's very rare that I'll see boobs that I don't like. In all honesty. And I'm quite the connoisseur, if I say so myself. But the boobs that I like looking at are real. And I've yeah, always... Yeah, but no, it's no, not let me made finish. as porn. No, no, because no, you're annoying me. I don't care. What's the point? I don't understand what your fucking point is. I have issues. And I think this is why I don't yeah, read my... there we go. Nope, that's it. We're done. That was all we needed. Move on. And You've said it. This you is, have issues. This is yes, also you do. why I don't read uh, these What are we talking about next? The gameplay of this game. Let me finish my point. This is also why I don't read my comics for that reason. I have issues when it comes to boobs that have been, like, created. And I don't mean surgically. I'm okay with that. I mean, like, drawn or, you know, like, like th- this where they're animated. To me, like, the fact that someone sat down and has put it all together in that way, just, I, I struggle with it, Jack. Listeners, f- seriously, like, seriously, listeners, I'm, I want to have a moment with you. Just me and you, listeners. I know... I know that when you listen to this, sometimes I come across as angry and aggressive, and I struggle to make my point sometimes, and that's that's fair to say, and I, I can accept that flaw in myself, but for real, th- what you're hearing Liam talk about right now, that's not, this isn't rare, this isn't a one-off thing, this is Liam, this is what I have lived with, not lived with, put up with, for like six years, seven years. I have no flaws. That is, it's, it's this, <laughs> listeners. Just I think this I've is made... why I try so hard, and I, I, it's because I feel like I'm doing a service to the world. I want to change him. I genuinely I think I've made a very valid point, Liam. It's not necessary, right? So here's the thing: it's not necessarily the point you're making that's got me here this time. Right. What I'm, what I'm feeling right now, yeah, yeah is we're trying to have a discussion about the story. Emotions. Yeah, let's talk about my emotions. We're, we're trying to have a discussion about the story, something that I actually like in this game. Of, I'm interested in talking about. And yeah. somehow, you diverted that story and the conversation about that story into a legitimate five-minute conversation. I say conversation. A five-minute monologue about your opinion on, on tits. I'll be honest. I don't care what you think about tits. It's a minor part of the game. But it's a minor part of might. Like, I don't think they do. Well. It's just weird, bro. It is weird that they put tits in this game. I'm pleased to agree. So anyway, I think the story is... Interesting. Like, I love the fact that you've got these underrunning themes and, like, you've got this, like... Because you meet these characters who Geralt clearly has tension with romantically and other things where, you know, he'll meet people and clearly there's a history there. And you can get bits of it by reading the uh, the entries they give you in the glossary thing. I've never is, read any of that. Not even the stuff about the monsters? That. I mean, you it tells you what their weaknesses are. Yeah, I know, but I just don't care because the thing is, right, yeah, it's, it's easier... That way, but one. I mean, it's the way it was on made. The hardest difficulty on death. That's March. the way it was made, Liam. This yeah, is the same thing with you not using the oils. But it, yeah, exactly. It's like, but you, oh, but, but Liam, you're fucking save scum. But get this. It's like, oh, 
Oh, we want you'll you to save be a scum a game of Gwent that you lose. Oh, we but you, you won't read <laughs> the right. thing that it's literally not cheating. They're literally giving it to you and yeah. saying, "Yeah, you should use this." It, it's, this is saying, "Oh, we want you to be like a Witcher. We want you to do your research and know how to kill these things." And the fact of the matter is, these things die if I just hit them enough times with my sword anyway. So why would I waste my time? Because you kill them quicker, and especially on, I'd imagine, like because you've ex- you've said to me on on my save. Because I'm playing on normal, I think I'm playing on normal. Yeah, I, yeah. You regain health when you meditate, which is like a yeah, you it's don't like get the standard weight thing. Yeah, which you don't get on the difficulty Liam is playing on. Yeah. So surely something that means you lose less health saves you resources. I'm not being funny, but the combat is easy enough to figure out that it is unless I get massively outnumbered, it's very rare that I will take a lot of damage. Maybe like they'll get a lucky hit in here or there, or like an, I, I won't see an arrow coming my way. But the combat's easy enough to get your head around that it's rare I take damage. Yeah, but I imagine... Fair enough, whatever. Well, that's, that, I don't that's know. our next, I don't that's get our next what, section. Sometimes that's I don't get... I think this is the issue. I don't know. I just feel like... I don't know. I don't yeah. think you have issues with things because of what they are. I think you have issues with things when they don't fit you. Do you see what I mean? I see what you mean, but I disagree. I think I just like things to be good and it bothers me when they're not yeah but that's what i'm saying you you want things to be good like i can appreciate that fifa is a mm. game that people love yeah. and there are things in it that are good i don't like fifa yeah i don't I, think it's I, a fun game but i'm aware it that does it nothing is for fun. Me. yeah but i'm aware that people like it and it's good wait here's the thing jack just because other people like something and think it's good it doesn't invalidate your opinion no no of no it yeah not that's fine good. i get that that's yeah but i, I don't know if you when you talk about these things, yeah, I'm not sure if you you never sound. I don't know. It just doesn't come across to me that you're saying, "Oh, this is why I don't like it." I don't get that feeling from you. I mean, that's always I think inferred. Like everything. I don't I know say, if it is. I think the way you talk, because so, I know you think you're, you know, God. Well, exactly. Not, so I, I wouldn't. I, think I wouldn't you say might legitimately. Like, I wouldn't say God. That's a bit high. But you know, all right. All right. Do you want to talk about gameplay? Because you you mentioned the combat. Should we talk about gameplay? Yeah, I'd love to. This is where, yeah, the gameplay is where I had the most issues with this game. What issues did you have with the gameplay? Uh, I really didn't like the, uh, the horseback riding stuff. Yeah, that was quite awkward. It's so painful. Yeah. Like, the, I honestly, just yesterday when I was finishing off the stuff and getting in Skellige and stuff, Yeah. there was this bit where I was riding over a bridge. Okay. And it's one path, so it wasn't like, because sometimes, because basically when you, when you double tap X you're on your horse... Yeah. If you're on a path or facing a path, the horse sort of locks onto it and yeah. follows it. Yeah, and it also your stamina don't go down then. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like a quick travel, but they've got another fast travel mechanic that's better. Yeah. But if there are like multiple paths, you can nudge the stick to sort of guide him onto one a little bit. Yeah. You've still got to then try and keep him on that path for a little bit until it sort of locks back into the right. I'm following this route. Yeah. But I was on. A, there was literally one path with a bridge over this massive chasm. And my horse was locked onto the path the whole way up, gets right to the top of the bridge, and then because it's when it's doing the auto lock, it doesn't tend to stick to the middle. It tro- sort of hovers on the edge of the path. Mm-hmm. It ran off the fucking cliff, and I ended up having to take an extra ten minutes to get where I was going because I had to n- navigate back out. Should have just reloaded. No, because the, the save. I don't. Sa- I don't save before every bridge. Oh, see, that's the other thing I found with this game because um, I am playing it. On Death March, yeah, you're I saving do a lot. Save like m- more than I need to, really. Yeah, see, I'm not saving like at all. Okay, because I'm I I, I only ever I've probably had two or three deaths, and yeah. one of them was you know something fucking. I think I did, I did something the other day, and I died at a stupid bit. Like as I was getting back to, oh, I fell off a I fell off a cliff because I was in town oh, and I was yeah. trying to go fast by jumping over ledges. Yeah. And I did one that was slightly too high, so I died. And it honestly, it reloaded me so far back, and I still had to then fight the final boss again. And I was like, I've uh, just done this. That's not. I think one of the um, things that like it's not a huge complaint, but it's a gripe. Is I don't know how you play these sort of games. Like, um, like I guess Elder Scrolls is a good kind of comparison. But like when I'm in a city or something, um, let's say it has multiple levels, I quite like getting down to a lower level by jumping off roofs and stuff. Yeah. I died jumping off of a roof that really wasn't that high um, in the middle of Novigrad. Yeah. And it's, no, it's, it's, it's weird. It doesn't, like, like, give you a... I don't know what the death height is. It's really low. Very yeah. low. Um, 
But yeah, I would say the, the actual gameplay would break down into two different kind of sections. You've got the combat, and then you've got running from one conversation to the next, basically. Um, well, and ex- exploration. Yeah, but there's never the, the exploration is very rarely quest driven. It's more like, oh, I wonder what's over there. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like exploration. Like quests will be like, you need to go here, and you could generally just follow a road and go there quite. Safely. I don't. Yeah, but I don't. I don't. I don't count quest exploration as exploration. That's not. If a quest says to you, go to this place in the yeah, woods, but that's what not I'm exploring. Is the exploration, you can avoid it if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, you know, at the end of the day, when you talk about exploration as a gameplay mechanic, it just means that you can just wander around, right? No. And you, like, discover you, stuff. You've talked about exploration before in things like Destiny. It's like going and finding those hidden boxes that we started discovering right at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I honestly... Like, I, so, because Witch has got... It's got loads of, like... Little hidden points areas. on the map that you can go to and they yeah. you know give you shit. Yeah, which I I happily did in the starting area that took five hours, and then I saw the amount there was in the main area, and I just haven't bothered. Oh, they're useful. You should be doing them. Oh, I probably should. I should probably be doing lots of things, but yeah, I'm managing. Um, so yeah, you got the exploration. You're not enjoying but... it. No, I'm not. But then so, like, yeah, I mean, you've got combat to to drive the story forward. Then you've got combat, and you've got well, no, but then you can't cut out other bits just because they don't fit into your neat little two categories. No, the just let me have exploration fits. as a gameplay mechanic. Yeah, I'm letting you. All right, three things then. Okay, thank so, you. But there's the stuff that it doesn't, want. Dri- it doesn't drive the story forward, does it? I don't care if it drives the story forward. It's okay. a gameplay mechanic. The stuff that does drive the story forward. No, nope, just no, 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 no. Not just not say, it. just say, Liam. Just okay. say. What do you want to say? The gameplay breaks down into three parts. All right. And then say those three parts. Okay. The gameplay breaks down into three parts. You've got exploration, which isn't that important. And then you've got the two parts that drive the story forward. (laughs) That's better. At least you put exploration first that time. (laughs) You've got combat. Yeah. And running from conversation to conversation. Movement. Yeah, but the thing is, there's been entire quests, right? Where it's literally, go talk to this person. Now come talk to me. Now go talk to that person. And now come talk to me. And I got more experience doing that shit than I did when I do like a side quest that's like go and kill a fucking beast that's massive. Pisses me off. And the combat shit, yeah. I don't like it. Like it's it's better than some of the like actiony RPG games I've played, but uh, it doesn't compare to something like uh, Shadows of Mordor. What? Yeah. What? What is it that makes it not compare to that? That's a legit. It's just a legit question. Like because I, I think, agree. Yeah. The Shadow of Mordor gameplay is really good. Yeah, I think that that is a lot smoother and a lot more fluid and it, what you can do better with that is change targets whereas this everything just feels a little bit clumsy like there's definitely yeah. times where I'm like I want to be doing this and I you know input the control to do that in the gamepad and it does something completely different yeah yeah or it doesn't do it in the way I thought it would do it yeah I've had stuff where you know you try and dodge left and yeah. for some reason the input is slightly wrong so it dodges forward into an attack and you yeah. get hurt or it just like backs away and oh Another thing that's very annoying is when you sort of dodge out of the way, but you dodge too far to then follow up with a swing attack. Yeah. It's just stuff like that is what makes the combat feel a bit clumsy, I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, it's not, yeah, it's not the smoothest thing. I don't mind it. Like, I don't hate it. Yeah. But I, think, I do agree it's not the nicest combat system. No. I think the other thing we, ha- we haven't really spoken about yet, but we probably should, and I don't really know if it fits in story or gameplay, maybe it sort of straddles the two. Okay. But Geralt's voice annoys me. Yeah, you said this to me. I yeah. don't see it or hear it, I guess. I don't know how you don't get it. Well, I mean, I I don't think I'm alone. No, he doesn't cause... sound like a real person. He sounds like, as I've said to you before, he sounds like Christian Bale when he's doing the Batman voice. But he sounds like that always. See, I don't I don't agree with you. I think it sounds right for who Geralt's meant to be. No, because he walks around and he's like... Oh, I'm Geralt and I've got... That's not how he sounds. Really you keep annoying. giving him like a North London accent. You do a gritty, gritty voice, and then you do a weird accent underneath. I'm not good at doing voices. I know you're not, but, but like that's I what mean, it you sounds said this like. To me, you said this to me as we were setting up, Liam. I'm Gerald. So I was looking up who did the voice because yeah. I thought, oh, if we're going to talk about it, it's a guy called Douglas Cockle. Oh, my name's Douglas Cockle, and I'll do the voice uh, of Gerald. But what I also saw when I looked it up because I was like, I don't understand. I think he's all right. Was that he was uh, nominated for a game award for best performance for his performance in which? No film. way. So uh, clearly, Liam nominated. You might be in the yeah. Nominated. Yeah. To just go, hello, my name's Geralt. Where's Siri? I can't yeah. find her. Clearly, mate, you're in the minority here. Oh, there's You monsters. can keep doing your bad impression of him, but that's not... I'm going to... Uh, when I edit this, I'll edit in a line of dialogue. Oh, yes. Please do. I will. Please do. 
I won't say what order. Yeah, if you're angling to make it a fivesome, there's clearly no room. I'm Geralt. Yeah, so if you're angling to make it a fivesome, there's clearly no room. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll put, I'll edit in that line of dialogue said by yeah. both of you. Yeah. And then I won't say which one's which. Yeah. I want the listeners to tweet <laughs> and tell me which one's the real Witcher. But, I, like, I just, I f- like, we, we had quite a big discussion about this, and I feel like I'm valid in my assessment. Well, that you don't like his voice? Yeah. Why? I, d- I don't understand. You've given no because argument Because I'm not allowed you just to... Said... No, because I'm allowed to not like things, Jack. That's... Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> I disagree with you. I think he's a good voice actor. And they picked a good... Uh, the right you know, guy the voice, voice that Gerald. I do... Damn it, you've got me saying Gerald. The voice that I do really like is Triss. Yeah? Yeah, it doesn't really sound like a real voice. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know how I feel about the American accents. Yeah. What's that about? Obviously, when really I was weird. doing my impression of, of Geralt, I didn't do an American accent. No, because he doesn't. No, that's what I'm saying. You've yeah. got... So Yennefer and him don't have American accents. And there's quite a few of like just commoners as well. Like, yeah, hey, most what people... are you doing, governor? Bit like yeah, that. They talk, so yeah, you've got Velen and Novograd sort of yeah. talk like the traditional common English peasant, whatever, yeah. from medieval yeah. times. Yeah. Then you get characters like Triss and Dandelion who've got American accents. Yeah. And it's weird. Like Skellige... Now that I'm there, they all talk like northern people. I, I just like... I don't know who does the voice of Triss, um, but I like the way they've done that, that voice. Yeah, yeah. So um, we've only got one more section left to talk about now, haven't we? Yep. And would you like to get us started on that? No, because it's your section. This is the bit you wanted to talk about, so I'm going to let you start on it. The one saving grace for this godforsaken pile of dog shit excuse of a game that's you're being probably over the top deliberately harsh. to wind me up that's a bit harsh yeah because you don't like that. it's not a pile of dog shit but i don't know like what's what's how would you put into words between that and quite tedious that's fine just say you uh, th- just say this game it's pretty obvious liam that you don't like it mate you've not been subtle no but i'm about to save that right get ready because as, as i was saying the one saving grace to this game the thing that makes it redeemable and makes me kind of reluctantly play it is Gwent. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, Gwent is a card game that's built into the main game and you can play people that you meet and you can get different cards, you can enter tournaments and you can build a deck and it honestly, no word of a lie, I only play the main game so I can get to the next area where I can buy more Gwent cards. That's how good Gwen is. Sure. This is Nerd on Nerd, where it's Liam and Jack. Well, what I don't we know do what you want me to say. I don't know what you want me to say about Gwen, mate. Give our opinions. So oh, Jack okay. Is give I'll give you my opinion. opinion of Gwen. Gwen seems like it's probably a good game. I've heard from lots of people that it's really fun. Uh, my issue with it is that it's it looks good, but if you ignore it for too long, right? Right. That's it. You can't you can't play it. Why? Because there are quests in the story that require you to play Gwent. Yeah. You don't get a choice. You just have to play it. And yeah. if you haven't collected cards up to that point, you have the worst deck. Yeah. I won one game by chance because I happened to, to draw luckily. And it just feels like... There's, if there's that only... was a real life game, it would suck. Wait, there's only Because it one... would literally be whoever buys the cards wins. There's only one point in the story that I can think of where there's a quest to play Gwent and it's not mandatory. It's there are... Optional. There are... Nope. There's a mandatory one where you have to play Gwent. You might not have done it yet then. When When's that? Uh, you end up having to play to save someone's life. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, I've, there's, it, I think it, may, it might, that one might have been a side quest. Well, maybe you should have been collecting the cards then. Yeah, but that's that's silly. It's effectively, like, whilst it's good and it's comprehensive, it's, yeah. it's a side game still. It's not, like, I know you're playing it for that, mm-hmm. but you shouldn't be required to play the game to get these cards. No, but when it's the best part of the game, I don't see it's why not. you wouldn't. It's, it's not. It's an alright game. It's, Hearthstone is better. I think, well, obviously, the issue... So, what, yeah, so if, you, or if you're only playing it to collect the Gwent cards, why the fuck aren't you just playing Hearthstone? Because we're not doing Hearthstone, we're doing the Witcher. Oh, no, 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 because you've been playing the Witcher for longer than we've been doing, than we suggested on Nerd on Nerd. That is true. So don't try and use this as an excuse. So I think what I like about um, Gwent is, uh, with Hearthstone... It's kind of like what you were saying with Gwent. If you don't play it, for, if you ignore it, it's really hard to then get into it. That's what's happened with Hearthstone. Um, with Gwent, one of the things, and I, I can't quite decide if it's a good thing or a bad thing, is that 
the game is kind of um, biased towards the player because obviously this is a single player experience this game so it always kind of especially once you actually do start collecting the, the good cards the game is kind of the difficulty is in your favour but Surely that's a bad thing pardon well, you said you couldn't you didn't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing is that not a bad thing I don't it doesn't to me like impede my enjoyment okay so I'm, I'm not sure yeah like, so it's still fun it's not necessarily the best mechanic in a yeah, game but it's fun but it's still fun yeah yeah that's a good way of putting it Jack but yeah I, I honestly I think Gwen is very good yeah it seems it seems fun I yeah the only times it's annoyed me I don't mind it being in the game I've got no fucking issue with it yeah the only time it's annoyed me is when it when I had to play it and I was like my my guy hasn't been collecting the cards why the hell would he be like let's play this game that that was a not a bad impression. I was doing the dwarf. I thought you were doing Geralt. <laughs> no, I was doing Geralt. I didn't. I that's forgot fine. that you'd done impersonations, and I wasn't trying to do one. No, that's fine. I I liked it. Can you do it again? No. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's that's weird. A shame. It's weird. Oh, I don't know. What's also, weird? It, it's annoying me because the only thing I want to play, the, like I like the look of it. Yeah. When, yeah. But I don't want a fucking Novigrad deck or whatever that default deck is. Is it monsters? I, no, I want monsters. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Is monsters a deck that you want? Yeah, when do you get monster cards? Honestly, I've been playing for 38 hours and I don't even have a full monster deck yet. It's fucking annoying. The Novigrad one is shit, but the one next to it, I can't remember what it's called, is actually really good. Nilfgaard? Yeah, it might be. Yeah. Uh, the, like, the, the, yeah. There's the, the, there's basically the, the Societel, which are the elves. Yeah. yeah. So each, Nilfgaard and the monsters. Each of these groups also has, like, a kind of mechanic that isn't, like, unique to it, but the, the decks are kind of built around it almost. So, um,. The the elves one, the big kind of mechanic to them is that you can choose which... I mean, let, let's not go into the rules of Gwent, but you can choose which of the lanes that you put certain cards in. You'll have like a choice yeah. of two instead of just one. Uh, the Nilfgaard one that I like is um, once your cards are kind of in your graveyard, you can play another card that gives you the option to bring it out. Yeah. Which I quite like. I, I don't really know what's special about the Novigrad one. It's just very basic and boring. And the Monsters one, what's good about that is there's certain cards that will call other cards of that type out of your deck. That's so, like, all your power. vampires' cards will just come and destroy. Yeah. It's, it's a real... It's, it is, like I like said, considering it's just a side game, a lot of thought has been put into it. Um, it I does don't, make it enjoyable. I don't, don't give it too much credit. But that, it's well, not, like, the best designed game No, ever. it's fun. It's super fun. Like, like it's like, annoying when you, when you are playing a round and the other guy, right at the end play something that overpowers you and you've got like two cards left in your hand and you're like oh right i've just lost the two rounds yeah that is annoying at the but... start of a game and you're like well but if you had a better deck that maybe wouldn't have happened yeah which to get that i need to go back and do all the bullshit which i don't so want to do. can we then just tie this into my last point that is annoying the one thing that is very annoying about this game for me and i know this yeah. is less of an issue for you is the trophies there are certain trophies in this game that are missable and when a game's like 100 plus hours long, I just think it's a bit shit to have trophies that you can get locked out of. Um, I just think that's bad trophy design. I feel like, you know, if let's just say, as someone who does like to collect the trophies, if I got all the way to the end of the game and then realised that I'm missing one and I've got to go back and do like the first 60 hours again to get it, that's not good design. Yeah, no, I understand that. And one of the things that's been very frustrating for me to play this is I've had to look up what trophies are missable and make sure that I'm following the game in a certain way so that I don't miss them. Which makes it hard to just sit down, relax, and enjoy the game. I've always got to have my laptop open with one eye to make sure I'm not accidentally locking myself out of anything. So I have I have a legit question then. Okay. Like, I get I get that you want to get the trophies for games. Yep. I do, I understand it. Yep. But if it detracts from your enjoyment of a game, I don't understand why you can't just go, well, I'm not going to get the trophies for this game. Because like, it's, like, it's weird in that, like... I don't really know why a lot of people play games, okay? Like, I get, yeah, fun, enjoyment, I want to complete it, etc. But the reason why I like to play a game is to complete it and get all the trophies. So, to me, I quite like it when I get that little platinum trophy and I can go, right, I've completed that game, I've seen everything that the game makers want me to see in that game, I can put it to one side and start another one. Like to me, I still think you look at trophies the wrong way. Like to me, did we say did we say this before on something? Because I don't think we have had a discussion I don't about think the game before. makers make trophies and go right. We're going to make this a path to get to so, to show people our game. I think they put it in and they go, "What is a hard thing to do?" Because we yeah, need see, three that's of those I think, to get this. That's where I think the trophies are, are wrong. In a bad, but then why can't you just say fuck the trophies then? Because that's, that's not the what way games I work. do. 
But that's what the games do. No one is making the trophies the way you want. No, some are. There's definitely some What games, games. do the good trophies? Well, you're going to hate me when I say it. Is it Last of Us? No, that, there's a couple of annoying trophies in that. Okay, go on. Um, Uncharted. You get okay. trophies for following the game. You get trophies for doing it on different difficulties. And they stack, which I'm a big fan of. And Most games you... do the stacking one, though. Yeah, um, which it does as well. But why The Last of Us was annoying is because I think the hardest difficulty doesn't unlock until you completed it once. You have to yeah. complete it at least twice. Um, and then you get additional trophies for like finding the collectibles that are around and doing certain combat things, like getting a certain amount of headshots or killing a certain amount of enemies with this weapon. Those trophies, none of them detract from the game, and none of them are like, oh shit, I've fucked up this part of the game and now I can't get that trophy. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's how I think trophies should be. Yeah, because also, like it, you can't to me, deal with it. yeah, it adds an additional layer then, because if I was just playing Uncharted normally and there wasn't the trophy element to it, I wouldn't bother going around finding all the collectibles. But because there is the trophy, I'm willing to do it. And therefore, I feel like I'm seeing more of the game that the developers want me to see. That's why I guess they put those things there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But like, so in things like Assassin's Creed, yeah, I went and did all those flags not to get the trophy. Okay, but just I to just did it. See I was it. like, oh yeah, cool. I've completed this game. What else can I do? I can go and explore the world and get all these flags. Yeah. It wasn't to get the trophy. I just was like, oh, I wonder if you unlock a sword or something at the end. But just the trophy, was it? I, I can't even remember. I, may, I might not have completed it. Like, I'm happy with just the trophy. I don't need like an in-game item or anything. But um, so, 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 okay. So that's that's fine. I get what you're saying, and I agree. That's how trophies should be. Right? Yes, yes. But then, if that that that's what I don't understand. That's what they should be. Yeah. They aren't that in all games. So if yeah. it ruins a game experience, which to me, like. So, for, well, for example, for I example, think ruins is a strong word. No, yeah, yeah, no, detracts. No no, but, no, no, okay, but I don't know if it is because the way I was playing Witcher Three, right? Yeah, I didn't want to play Gwent. I was like, if I'm that desperate, I'll go back and play Gwent at the end. I'll go and just find all the cards. Yeah, which you can't do Gwent. because you lose. Some yeah, if you exactly. Don't do certain bits. Yeah. yeah. So there's certain points in the game where a character might die and you yep. can't get his card. Yes. Right. And which it is annoying, right? And it said you failed this. Yeah. This quest, and I was like, oh, okay. That's right. Which so if I was playing it the way you were playing it, yeah, I would have to then go back to a save before I did that, yeah, and I would then have to go and do all the Gwent stuff. So to me, that would ruin the game. If I had if I had got to that point and I was trying to do trophies, but I hadn't looked it up, yeah, that, that would have ruined the game for me. That's why you 100%. look up the trophies first. But then you're look, having to look up stuff like you, that. To me, I know that I'm a different type of gamer to you. Yes, that to me is the like complete opposite of what I want to do in a game. I don't want to have to look stuff up beforehand yeah, I want to like, go don't in get me wrong. I want to experience this world it is very annoying having to do that so they just shouldn't so have missable trophies so just don't do no, it honestly if it if it wasn't such a long game I wouldn't but like I said there no, is but no I mean, way I mean, just, I mean don't do it and then at the end Liam when you finish the game just don't just don't go and do the trophies but I, I won't imagine have Liam finish Liam, the game Liam, Liam I'm, I'm going to get real close to the mic okay let's, let's get Liam it. let's do some real talk you're going to hear me real quiet, Liam, but I'm leaning very close and the listeners will hear me very loudly. Oh, I can hear you just fine. Okay. What I want you to do one day, Liam, okay, well, I'm going to find you a game. Yeah. And I want you to put it in and I want you to play it. Do you want me to put it in? And then at the end. Hard. Right at the end, Liam. Fast. When it's all finished. Yeah. I want you to turn it off. Yeah. Without the platinum trophy. Why would I do that? That's what I want. I just want you to do one game like that, Liam. Just one Which game? game. Which game? I don't know. I'll find one for you. Here's the thing, there's definitely been some games where, like um, Alien Isolation, for example, I think I've got like 75% of the trophies, and the last couple to get are really annoying. It's like, um, one of them is complete the game without dying. Yeah, which, that's difficult. Yeah. Stuff like that, I, I, you know, I will look at it and I'll go, you know what, that's not worth it, I'm not going to put my time into doing that. But, also, in the back of my mind, okay, the way my brain works, it goes, you haven't completed that game. So I have a little, like, draw next to my PlayStation games of the ones that I have completed, in which I mean I have the Platinum Trophy. Even though I've completed the story of that game, in my mind, it's not completed. Yeah, I feel sorry for you. Thank you. Because I think it... I know that that it's different because because you don't want to... Because you are playing it that way, Yeah. it doesn't matter that you're playing it that way. And then the same for me, like, if someone were to go to me, oh, you haven't got the trophies in this, I'd be like, yeah, but I completed the game. Like, yeah, exactly. I know that we're both very different. It just, it, yes. I, I couldn't imagine playing a game like Mass. Like Mass Effect is the best example. I know you haven't played it yet. Yeah. But that to me would be the best example of something where 
I could easily see. I don't know what the achievements are like in those games or the trophies, but I could easily see it, see it being something where you then had to make different decisions than you would nece- like than you might want to. And that to me is bad trophy design. It shouldn't be that way. Yeah, no. And then I think it's sad that you would do that. Do what? Not that you would then have to make that decision. Yes, it and is. I agree. It's the trophy design's fault, or the tro- whoever yeah, decides the trophy. The trophies, fault, I think. Yeah, the trophy should be to accentuate the gameplay. You know, it should be like yeah, a in some games extra it should just thing. be a, an impressive thing that you've done. Yeah, but it shouldn't be something that you have to divert yourself to do. Exactly. Yeah, and also something that you can easily go back and do later. Yep. So you know, out of five. Yeah, go on. You're, I know yours is going to be fairly low. What would you give The Witcher Three? I think I'd give it a four out of five. That's pretty high. Yeah, I really liked it. And you've also been enjoying the books and stuff, haven't you? Yeah, after playing, say, 20 hours, I think. Yeah. I went and uh, bought the books. Would you say think... that um, Sorry. Yeah. after reading the books and kind of filling yourself in with the lore a bit more, is that um, kind of making it's... the gameplay experience better? Uh, it just means that you understand more in the story. Like, there are characters okay. that they, they get introduced well enough. Well, they get introduced in the game and you're like, oh, okay, I know who that is. But then when you go back and read whatever story it is that introduces that character. Yeah. It's like, I mean, the main one would be the relationship between Geralt, Ciri, and Yennefer. Okay. Because, like, at the beginning, when we started talking about this, you were like, yeah, Geralt's, like, her trainer, like, her mentor sort of thing. Yeah. But, like, the actual backstory between those two is fucking, like, Geralt... Because Geralt's a mutant who has no feelings. Yeah. And he basically... There's this thing. He ends up basically meeting Ciri when she's a child. Yeah. And gets bound by fate with her. And right. then her parents get slaughtered and she ends up, like, he ends up finding her again after all this and basically, find like, he's trying to understand what he feels for her, which is love, because she's basically his daughter who he, he can't have children. Okay. And same with Yennefer, like, sorcerers, sorceresses in this world, most of them become infertile, so Yennefer's whole thing is that she really wants kids but can't have them. And there's a yeah. scene in one of the books where she calls Siri her daughter for the first time. Yeah. Just, like, almost accidentally. So, like, then when you've read, when I've read that and then I'm playing the game and I'm seeing how they're acting, you get, like, another sort of level Makes to it. Like, sense. it's there in the game anyway. Yeah. But I'm yeah. like... So when Yennefer says something about Siri, I'm like, oh, it's because she's, like... It's effectively like they're looking for their kid. Yeah, got you. So, like, it, it's definitely... It has helped in the story for me. Okay, fair enough. I'd advise um, people read them if they want. They're quite interesting. Yeah, I, I would give I wouldn't it... suggest it to you, because you... Don't no. care that much about this story. Yeah, so yeah. I, I think if you had like a a passing interest in the backstory, yeah, go for it. If you're like me and you read the best theory entry for every monster, then go. Yes, read the book. exactly. I haven't. Um, I'm going to give it two out of five, but with the caveat that Gwen gets four out of five. <laughs> Fair enough. We've had some correspondence about The Witcher Three as well. Go on. So, um, soap in a box at Soapbox Pod tweeted us very simple three word tweet too much narrative now i'm gonna say nothing because i feel like i've said enough but i think you might have a response to this yeah well i really like the narrative of this game so i think the opposite maybe not the opposite there's enough narrative not too much no don't think so okay if you don't like it skip it skip the narrative if you yeah if you really like if you're playing it for just the gameplay yeah like this guy could easily have just sat there pressing square going through all the dialogue fuck it make some random choices and just leave it would have been very confusing game to do that though yeah, but he's the one that he's the one that thinks there's too much narrative, not me. Do you not think there's a happy medium where maybe he didn't have to do that, but they could have, you know, maybe no, got it's to a the sto- point no. a bit. It's a story there based is game. A lot of dialogue. It's a story based game. If you don't want to play a story based game, find a different game. Good advice. Um, we've yeah. also had a password required at podcast required emailed us saying, "How about comparisons to the Souls series?" From a story perspective, I always found them a little unfair. The Witcher had a much more direct narrative, but I found combat in Souls much more satisfying. So what I'm basically getting yeah, from I this, and I might be wrong, is I think what they're basically saying is they prefer the story in The Witcher, um, but the combat in Souls. Yeah, which is... I, I've only played Bloodborne, and I've play, tried to play a bit of... Which isn't Tobin. really a Dark Souls game anyway, is it? It's, like, it's I mean, the same it's, company It's the same mechanics. Yeah. And the story's the same as the Dark Souls things, in that there's no story if you're just playing it. Yeah, it's all in like looking at the world and all that okay. stuff. So, I've like, never played any of the Dark point. Souls. Like the Dark Souls games and Bloodborne's combat are better than The Witcher. Okay, that's my opinion. No, so I, mean, I haven't played any of the Dark Souls games. Did you not play? I only briefly played a little bit of Bloodborne. So you should play more of it. I I really struggled with it, Jack. It's it's difficult to get in the I yeah. It's a difficult game to get in the mindset to play. 
Okay. Um, next time on Nerd on Nerd, it's a special episode, isn't it, Jack? Yeah, it is indeed. Why is it so special? It's our year anniversary. We'd have been doing this goddamn show for a year. I just think back to poor Amanda, who's going through doing all of the episodes. That's probably like over 24 hours of content, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Like, each episode's roughly an hour or so. Normally a bit over. Yeah. So, if she actually listens to every single episode, she'd have spent more than a day of her life with us in her ears. <laughs> Sorry, Amanda. I, th- I think we can only apologise. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've we've come up with something... I say we. Primarily Liam. I'd say his solely. his baby that he's come up with. I would say solely Liam. No, because I feel like I've had to put in caveats. Yeah, that's true. You've had to so like the fun. You met you birthed this demon. Yes, and then I locked some of it down and said no. <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to tell them what your majestic idea is for our one year super special anniversary episode? We are both going to write erotic fan fiction featuring each other. We are going to be writing a piece of fan fiction each. I will write one. Liam will write one. Mm-hmm. We will then read it on the show. It will be 10 minutes each is the time we've allowed ourselves. Yeah. And then the other person will critique the work. Yes. And uh, you guys can critique it too by tweeting at us. Perfect. And also, because obviously normally we'll say, oh, next week we'll be doing this. So if you have thoughts on it, let us know. If you want to give us any um, writing prompts, or if you want to have a go at writing some fan fiction even, um, just tweet us. Probably email us, to be honest. How would they email us, Liam? They, real simple. They could just um, use any email company, provider, service, any email service that yep. they so choose, and they just pop in a little email to uh, nerdonnerdpod at gmail.com. Yep. How, how else could I say I wanted to uh, say I was more of a social media guru? Oh, well, um, in that case, you can find us on Twitter at nerdonnerd. And say I wanted to... Say I didn't understand technology. Okay. Where would I send a letter to? Um, don't. Oh, okay. Just, I, I, in, the, in the time it takes us to record this and turn it around, your letter probably wouldn't get here in time. <laughs> that is a fair point. Yes. But you, you, they could, you know, if they wanted to see what we look like, they could check us out on YouTube. That's true. How would they find us on YouTube? Oh, it's a fucking palaver. It is. They would have to, um, they'd have to search... <laughs> Nerd on Nerd. It's called a fleshlight, I think, is what we've agreed is the easiest way. That's the one that gets you there. That will get you there. I mean, you could Um, also look at our Twitter, and then Liam is very good at posting our YouTube links. Yeah, we've been doing something new with YouTube lately as well. So um, maybe go and have that. give that a look. It will only take like three minutes of your time, pretty much. I I don't want you to get big-headed, Liam, but the videos you've been making for us are very good. Thank you. Um, And I, I think, you know, they've been going down well, I think. In that, unlike when we just post an episode up to YouTube that gets zero views, when we do the little short ones, they <laughs> do get, get some views. View. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.